Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today is a big one because that's right I've got this thing this big giant box GW was nice enough to send me the Skaven Tide box and I couldn't be more excited because finally our prayers have been answered we've got new rats new Skaven I'm gonna paint them today we're gonna talk about choosing a color scheme and we're gonna paint a clan rat I'm gonna take you through it Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vincey V style. New Skaven means it's time to either retire, replace, or repaint my entire 10 or 11,000 point army. So, the first thing we're going to do, of course, is look at what's in the Skaven Tide box. And, you know, it's got clan rats and Gisales and stuff like that. Anything that's in that new box, I'm going to replace my existing stuff. All of those get retired. So, if I'm going to repaint things, the very first thing we've got to do is pick a color scheme. So, today I'm going to talk about how to pick a color scheme for your army, some tools that I use, and I'm going to show you how I paint my new clan rat. Let's head over to the desk and let's get into it. Alright, step one is the research phase. So, when we're researching new uh, color schemes for an army, we look at the historical documents. And what I mean by that is you go on the internet and you search up Skaven color schemes. Now, one of the cool things about Skaven is that they, a long time ago in the mid-2000s, published this book of Skaven heraldry and stuff like that. So as a result of that, uh, there's all sorts of awesome clan color schemes. And I dug around through all of these, checking these things out, seeing what looked cool. I'm not looking to replicate any of them specifically, but this is a great place to start. Whenever there's art resources or color plates or similar for your army, it's always a great idea to start there and see if anything sparks some imagination. And it can be a great inspiration to, to sort of get you going. In this case, I found a clan called Clan Scully, which is very funny. I assume that's a Mulder and Scully reference, like the X-Files. I don't know. But it seemed pretty cool. I liked the red and sort of white. I liked, I thought it'd be eye-catching on the clan rats. I really wanted to use a kind of poppy red for them to sort of reflect the red rat cast that I did, but, but be slightly different. So just to have that kind of feel, that sort of mirror of the two forces. And I wanted it to be really, really eye-catching. Now, I'm going to be painting this army to basically a display level all the way through, which is completely insane. So, I have to figure out how to apply this color scheme. One thing you can do when you're trying to figure out how to apply a color scheme is use some quick, simple digital tools. Find a simple render of one of the models, or just take a picture of it in gray, uh, and put it into something like Paint 3D or GIMP or Photoshop or any kind of like photo manipulation program. And then we're just going to paint it. We're going to put some colors on it. And what this lets you do, you'll just take mock it up with a few seconds, and really what it allows you to do is kind of figure out exactly where you want colors to be, are they going to be in balance, that sort of thing. And it's just an easy way before you're actually painting the model to take 5 or 10 minutes and get a relatively reasonable interpretation of what the figures are going to look like and if the colors are going to work. My next step was to paint an actual test model. Now, I didn't use a clan rat for this. I didn't even use something out of the Skaven Tide box. I actually did the test model before I got this box at all. I took an old Warlock Bombardier that I had and painted him. Now, why the Warlock Bombardier? A lot of people, when they do test models, they do the simplest model in the range. So, a clan rat or a simple tactical space marine or whatever. My issue with that is that when you run into then more complicated figures, you're often at a loss of what additional colors to add or what you know what's missing from your scheme and now you've got to make new choices and they can sometimes go awry. I picked the Bombardier because honestly he's one of the most complicated models in the range. He has basically everything that any Skaven has on them on him. So that is to say he's got machinery and he's got diodes, he's got warp energy and warp stones, he's got the whole shooting match. And if I'm going to use this heavily red influence scheme, I need to make sure that it's going to show up okay with green. So here's, I just painted him up. I didn't record any of this because it was just a test model. Here's how he came out. You can see, I think he looks kind of fun. Uh, not too bad. But as I looked at him, I realized I wasn't super in love with the way I was rendering the red. So he looks okay. 
He needs a little more interest. I need to mix up a little more of the white. That's the first thing that occurred to me out of this original thing, is I've got too much red and not enough white in the cloth, because I do think the white helps set off the red. Um, but also, I need to go more orange and more bright with the actual cloth itself. So, uh, but I thought the warps the energy came out okay, the copper and all of that stuff is fine. So, for the most part, a success, but we got some important lessons learned. We can still use him going forward, no problem. He can just sit in the army and he'll, be, he'll look a little different and it's no big deal. But the first model for our new army is done. I'll say though, if you try a test model and it doesn't work or you don't like it, just paint over it. Just paint over it. Reprime it, paint over it. Prime over it, paint over it. Prime over it, paint over it. Do it until you're happy. And if it doesn't exactly match what you actually paint, who cares? No one, no judge, no human on the planet will ever notice. If it's close, it'll be fine. Okay, so with all of that pre-work out of the way, now it's time to finally paint the clan wrap. Now, with the bombardier, I actually went straight over black because I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted colors to go or how I wanted light to work and so on. This time, though, we're going to start with a very simple zenithal. And this is a soft zenithal. I'm not trying to take it all the way up to white because I don't want to blast the figure. So instead, I prime him in my Mr. Hobby Black, and then I use an ivory, and I use it soft over the whole model to just get some light there to make building the reds and things like that easier. Now I'm actually going to start with the skin tones, and I use just a nice range of sort of pinky to uh, pale skin. Importantly, my highlight is going to be a uh, gray-green tone, and I want to use the green to kill out the pink. As we've done many times in videos, I like using greens and pinks in skin tones together, as when they meet in the middle, you get a sort of brown or something gray and similar. So it'll create a nice mid-tone as we get into the highlights. It sort of subtracts out some of the pink very naturally. And I just build up the skin all over the guy. And then eventually, as I'm building it and building it, working in these sorts of layers, we're then going to end with some soft glazes of some of the original pink tones to smooth everything out. All in all, I like how this sort of pinky skin tone looks. I think it feels right to me. I didn't have a lot of skin on the bombardier, which is the only drawback to him. He only had like basically his hands and part of his uh, snout exposed. Um, this guy obviously has much more of a face. But overall, I think the skin came out very nice. It's what we're looking for. Next up, we're going to go to the cloth. And so with the cloth, we're going to do both the white and the red here kind of simultaneously. You'll see how I flip between these two. Um, but I'm trying, I want to build up and I want that red to be really intense. But I do want to have some travel in it. So the red I'm going to use is basically a nice spread uh, up to, uh, basically from a, uh, the dark sort of burnt red, up to this really intense atom red. And I'm also going to use some fluorescent orange. Now, the red painting here is really interesting because I build it up, but we're going to use the fluorescent trick to really get the intense saturation. So as I build up my red and get to a red, red highlight, it's still not bright and intense enough for what I want. I want the top of this to really, really pop. So I go to this pale flesh color that I already used, and I place it kind of on all the highlight areas. And your first thought is probably, oh my god, you just ruined this, what are you doing? But don't worry, it's all going to make sense. Once that's on there, I then go back in with the fluorescent orange and cover everything that was white and some of the red. And <clears throat> once that's completely dried, I then go back in with thin red glazes of my atom red, this really intense single pigment red, and I go over the top of it until it's toned correctly. But now I have that fluorescent orange underneath the very transparent red, just making this a punch you in the face, let's go red. Okay, so really, really super intense, and I love how it came out. For the whites uh, on this, we go simpler. I start with sort of a red-gray because I want it to be uh, kind of cold, and then I build myself up, basically ending at sort of a very nice warm white. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, nothing too complicated with this one. It's really just layering up through these cream tones. Importantly, I never go too dark. That red-gray is a perfect shadow color on this. 
and I only leave it a little bit in the recesses. I will glaze some of it at the end. And I never go all the way to white. I don't want this to go perfectly to white. That doesn't make any sense. Instead, what I want is for this to go up to uh, a nice warm cream color. I want the sort of yellow brown white that is the ivory to again set off the warmth of the red. So we're going for this very warm scheme. Next up is all the little fur elements, and I actually want this to be quite dark. Why am I making the fur so dark? Well, because the fur needs to set off the brightness of the skin and the brightness of the red. If I do a very light colored traditional brown fur, it will get lost amongst all of these bright red toned colors, whether it be the pinkiness of the skin or the red of his cloth. So instead, we're going to go very, very dark. So I get out my Pro Acryl Black Brown, and in that way, I am able to start from a very dark tone, and I do just add slightly lighter and lighter colors in here, but I do so only through very thin scratching and, ha scratching and hashing, building up to sort of a mid-gray for, for, the, for the individual uh, fur textures and strands. A lot of hashing and, and, and such in here, just lots of little individual strikes on the miniature to build it up. But the primary color underneath, what reads to the eye from a distance, is still dark, hence creating nice edges, for the very bright cloth, and so on. With that done, I did tackle uh, uh, the wood next, and the wood I used the same base brown uh, as I did for the hair. I just went through a different warm color to separate it out. Now again, I want the wood here to feel old and gray, and we're going to basically do a nice trick at the end. So with all the wood, I start with just that straight base coat of black brown, but then I build up through the warm tones, but I don't layer at all in a traditional sense. Instead, I, with all the wood, trace little thin lines. And I build up adding more and more of the warm ivory color in there. I want this to be fairly warm, and you'll see what we're going to do at the end, to get all those nice striations and the texture of the wood, both on his club and his shield. And I focus, though, I don't try to, I don't retrace every striation on the whole shield. This is really important. When you're layering through texture, then you need to layer in the same way that you would through highlights. So the whole shield face isn't lit. I think a lot of people, when they start doing texture, they lose their minds. They just start tracing the whole thing over and over. No. If you were doing it in layers, you would, you know, cover X amount with the base, and then a little less, and then a little less, and then a little less. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to do it with sharp, thin lines. So as I cover less and less on the shield every time, building up to that nice edges where I have the cool light and catching on the edge of the shield and clear travel of the light over the surface. Once that's all in place, I then go ahead and give the shield a nice wash of Seraphim Sepia. That's going to separate it from the fur as it gives it a much warmer, much more yellow tone and gives it that wonderful natural wood feeling. So I do that over there. I don't generally use washes in a lot of my schemes, but when you have a heavily textured surface like this wood and you want to filter your existing underlying colors, it's absolutely perfect. So I just did two thin coats with a moist brush of Seraphim Sepia over the shield and we're good to go. We've got some fantastic wood texture. I did a lot of little details off camera like his eyes and his teeth and the edges of the belt because it was just really fiddly work and these guys are very small, but I did do all that stuff. On the eyes, I used the same trick with fluorescent orange to make sure they really popped. And then I put in a little tiny dot of that green gray right on the centers of the pupils to make sure he actually has a little light reflection, a little life light in his eyes. That means then we've only got a few steps left. Again, I want all these guys to stand out, so a little bit of freehand on every single model in the army. Everybody's going to have some freehand design. The original Clan Scully color plate, and a lot of those color plates in that Skaven Heraldry book, had really cool uh, freehand on them. So we're just, there's not a lot of space on this guy where it makes sense, but we're going to put in some cool triangle patterns around his sort of right arm. I like asymmetrical freehand. I think it looks really cool. And it kind of looks like a little mouth on the edge of his uh, shirt kind of eating his arm, which I thought was kind of fun and cool. 
So I just build up those little triangles. Really nothing too complicated about it, but it does help the model pop and stand out as he's then with all of his friends who all have their own different freehand when we get up to 20 or 40 of them in a unit. I think it's going to look really cool. My last steps are the metals. So with the metal, I start with a base of magnesium, just kind of cover everything. There's not a lot of metal on this guy, and we're going to keep it nice and simple. I then am going to edge highlight with some silver. Again, just keep that, the magnesium base, get some nice bright poppy edges with the silver so we make quite a jump, but we're just going to hit the edges. And that's more or less good with the metals there. Now, I do want to weather this stuff, so I take a little bit of a mix of my previous browns and create uh, some rust, some, some old brown patterns in there, focusing around the rivets where water would naturally gather and rust. I then go to pure warm brown and sort of touch the individual rivets to make sure that they're nice and popped out. And then finally, I grab just a little bit of fluorescent orange and mix that with just a teeny bit of the warm brown, touch each rivet to get that fresh rust feel, and then the piece de resistance the very last thing we're going to do. I take a little bit of that orange, mix it in again with just a tiny bit of that brown, thin it down, and do some rust streaks running down the shield. Such a minor thing, but I, it does so much work. Whenever you can add these little touches of credible realism, like these simple streaks on a flat surface like this that's inorganic, that makes sense, it just helps bring the whole thing alive. And importantly, it gives something for the judges who are looking at your army to find when they get close. When they get close and look at the shields and see that each of your clan rat shields have little streaks on them and dots and like those little weathering details were paid attention to, it really makes a difference because you, they see the love and the care you put in, not just at the high level, but all the way down to those sharp details, and it only takes a few extra minutes. So there you go. Let's take a look at the boy. Obviously, I didn't do the base here. I've still got to decide on a basing scheme, but that's something separate. Stay tuned for future installations. Uh, but here he is. He's ready to go. I think this guy's a good-looking clan rat. This feels very repeatable. I can do this. The paints are controllable. I use a lot of the same paints overlapping with highlights and stuff like that. And I think he came out pretty cool. I am very excited about this new Skaven Tide box. Um, I hope you stay with me. We're going to paint a lot of this box in tutorials coming up over the next couple months. This is going to take a while. Um, this isn't a paint a thing in 24 hours. I'm not going to have this Gaven Tide box ready in a weekend because this really matters to me. This is my original army. I first purchased Gaven in like 1997, 1998. I truly love this army and I've been waiting so long for a refresh of these figures. So I want to, I want to just uh, put all the love and attention onto these guys that they deserve. And I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you come along the journey with me as we paint the different parts of this box and this army and whatever comes out. With that, I'll say thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, give it a like. If you've got questions about the Skaven Tide box you want me to answer, drop those down in the comments below. Always happy to help. Um, subscribe. We've got new videos here every Saturday. If you want to support the channel, lots of ways you can do so. There are uh, affiliate links down below uh, where you can pick up all your hobby supplies. It doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it usually saves you money <clears throat> and it gives the channel a nice kickback. We've also got <clears throat> our books down there from Uncle Adam and I if you're looking for some new cool skirmish games to play. And of course, there's our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, I thank you so much for watching this one. And we'll see you next time.